Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Houston ACR, we have you loud and clear. Thank you. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hello, I'm Dr. Wendy Winterstein, president of Iowa State University. Here at Iowa State, we're proud to support young people as they create, innovate, and explore the excitement of STEM in everyday life. On behalf of the Iowa Space Grant Consortium and Iowa State University Extension and Outreach, Iowa 4-H Youth Development, we'd like to welcome you to this NASA in-flight education downlink. Now here's our first student question. Hello, my name is Ria. My question is, what time zone do you follow in the space station? We are on, and we go by Greenwich Mean Time, which is in the U.S. If, you, uh, if you're in the central time zone in the U.S., we're five hours ahead of that. So if you're in the eastern time zone, we're four hours ahead of on the space station. My name is Michael, and my question is, what are your suits for? Well, Michael, we wear spacesuits, uh, different kinds of spacesuits for different activities. So when we're launching uh, in our capsule to come to the International Space Station, we wear a suit that will keep us safe and protect us if we have any kind of emergency. So it gives us a clean, breathable air inside our suit. Um, and then also we have another kind of suit that people wear for doing spacewalks. And so those have to be um, keep you in them for about eight hours, maybe even more. And you have to, again, you have to have a clean, breathable atmosphere you have to have some heating and cooling to keep you keep your temperature steady when you're out outside the space station and also um, you need power and communication so you can talk to the ground while you're doing your spacewalk hi my name is David and what I, my question is what does your suit look like in space so the suits that Megan was just talking about um, I would say the ones that we launch and land in they're pretty sleek um, they're form fitted to our bodies so they're a little bit tight I would say but they they're very functional and obviously protect us when we need it the uh, spacewalking shoots she was talking about they're kind of bigger and bulkier I mean they are massive um, and so it's a big mass that we have to move around and control when we're outside doing our spacewalks Hi, my name is Carson, and my question is, how much does your astronaut suit weigh when it's not in zero gravity? So the suit that's used for spacewalking, because it needs to have lots of specialized equipment and uh, contain an atmosphere for you when you're outside the space station, so exposed to vacuum, that suit weighs about 300 pounds. So you wouldn't want to have to try to walk around in it if you were on Earth. My name is Abby Drost, and my question is, can you see storms like hurricanes and tornadoes from space? We absolutely can, Abby, and uh, Megan took some really great pictures of recent storms that uh, were hitting the United States, um, hurricanes and such. Uh, we've also seen wildfires uh, and other kind of natural disasters, I'll call them, from up here. Um, we're about 250 miles above the Earth, so we do have a pretty good vantage point, especially with the cameras that we have available. Hi, my name is Danica. My question is, what inspired you to be an astronaut? Well, when I was a teenager, my dad was in the U.S. Navy, and we lived on a Navy base that shares um, space with a um, NASA center. And so at that NASA center, which is in California, it's called the Ames Research Center, I would see shuttle astronauts come. They'd land their T-38 jets on the ramp there at the Navy base, and they would come in to do uh, training to land the space shuttle. And I thought, well, that looks like a pretty fun job. I wonder what you have to, uh, to do to get a job like that. And so I looked at, into it a little bit and saw that um, astronauts come from all different backgrounds 
backgrounds in science and technology um, and different operations jobs and all of those things looked very interesting to me and I liked the idea of, um, of getting to do a lot of different things in the course of a single career. So that's what uh, first inspired me to uh, think about becoming an astronaut. My name is Rana and my question is, in your career, what would you consider to be your most successful failure? Well, there's probably a long list for me. Um, there's a lot of failures. I think a lot of us, I mean, we, we like to challenge ourselves. We like to do things that are very difficult. And that's really what I think helped get us to where we are today. But uh, those failures, you know, there's a couple of ways you can look at it. You can either learn from it or not learn from it. I think most of us have done a good job of being very humble and learning from our mistakes. Um, and then I, I think to answer your question, one of the things that uh, it's kind of a, a strange question and I don't know how to answer it, but I applied to be an astronaut several times. Um, I think the fourth time was when I got selected. So if you say the first three times um, of those were failures, I stuck with it and perseverance paid off and lucky enough to be sitting here talking to you today. Hello, my name is Mason Carl. And my question is what kind of jobs do you do on the space station? Mason, that's a great question because we do lots of different kinds of jobs every day. That's one of the really fun things about our job is that every day is a little bit different. So we live in a research laboratory, which means that, of course, we're doing science. We um, help researchers on the ground on Earth um, with lots of experiments that are up here on the space station, um, as well as we have to keep the laboratory running, which means sometimes we're plumbers, sometimes we're electricians, sometimes we have to fix the computer system. So we get to do a little bit of everything. It's kind of like um, being doing odd jobs all the time, being a handyman. Hi, my name is Ella, and my question is, what do you eat up in space? Thanks. We have a lot of different variety, thank goodness. But uh, Megan here is showing you a couple of the food packets, the general ones that we have. This one here um, actually is dehydrated, so we need to put some water in this before we can eat it. And that's what this little mechanism is up here. We hook it up to our water machine, put water in it. This is turkey tetrazzini, and you let it sit for about 15 minutes, and then it's really good to eat. These pouches um, also are very popular up here. This one is beef fajita strips. And these we can just heat up in our oven, uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then uh, they're warm. And, you, and this one you'd put on a tortilla, just like you would at home for some fajitas. Hi, my name is Brian Nelson. And my question is, what variables do you look forward to identifying non-visible objects in space? Well, Braden, I'm not an astronomer myself, um, but we do have a lot of scientific instruments on the space station, outside the space station, that conduct observations for astronomers on Earth. And so uh, what you're talking about is objects that don't emit light um, in a spectrum that we can see, um, but emit radiation in other parts of the electrical, electromagnetic spectrum. So, for example, gamma rays, X-rays, infrared, microwave. And so there are instruments that are specially designed to detect um, energy or light radiation radiation in that part of the spectrum. And um, we have some of those instruments, like I said, on board here at the International Space Station that can take data for years over long periods of time that astronomers can then use to make their observations. Hi, my name is Justine Weir. And my question is, although you have obviously been very well prepared for this task, is there anything that is different than you thought it might have been? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, you know, flying around and floating around is something you can't practice on Earth, so it's, it's something you got to get used to up here. So it was definitely different than I thought it would be. I thought it would just be super easy and you're always in control, but uh, controlling your body and controlling maybe things that you have, objects in your hands while you're trying to fly through the station is always a challenge, uh, no matter how long you've been up here. So uh, we have fun with it. Um, we kind of mess up a few times here and there and make fun of each other, but uh, it's all part of being in space. Hi, I'm Jordan Jemison, and my question is, what's your favorite part about being an astronaut? Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things I love about being an astronaut is that we get to do so many different things, that our job involves having to um, learn lots of different things and challenge ourselves and then get to do something different every day. But I have to say that the, probably my two favorite things are looking at the Earth as we go by at five miles a second. That's pretty awesome. And then, of course, also the floating and flying that we get to do um, every day living up here as we move around. It's super fun all the time. My name is Grace Johnson, and my question is, what were you not trained for or expecting 
once you made it to space. Oh, so, you know, as you can imagine, as we train for a mission, we're trained a lot on our spacecraft, on our spacesuits, on some of the tasks that we're going to do. But we don't ever get trained on how to operate and live in microgravity. So things like brushing your teeth and going to the bathroom and eating, all that stuff we have to learn on the fly, so to speak. Uh, but it's fun, and we get better at it, of course, and uh, we have a great time as we're, we're eating and tossing food around to each other. It's pretty fun. Don't try it at home, but uh, you can do it if you come up to space one day. Hi, my name is Bailey. My first question is, where do you sleep at? My second question is, where do you go to school at to become an astronaut? Well, we each have our own little closet here on Space Station, which is where we sleep and um, also where we have our laptops, so where we might make phone calls to home. Um, back here behind me is an example of one of the closets that we have that we get to sleep in. Um, so you can see they're not very big. It's about the size, a little bit smaller even than a phone booth. Um, and as for where you go to school to be an astronaut, well, you, you graduate from high school and then you go to university and you study um, science or engineering or math or something like that. And, uh, and but astronaut school for Americans is at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Um, we do travel around to the different training centers around the world. There's one in Russia, there's one um, in Germany, there's one in Japan, um, also in Canada. Where else? I think that covers it. Yeah, so we do get to go to astronaut school in lots of different countries, which is really fun. Hello, my name is Claire Hennessy, and my question is, what is it like to constantly be interacting with people from all over the world? Well, just building on Megan's last answer there, it's so much fun uh, to travel to places that I would never get to travel to otherwise. And then learning new cultures is really special, and uh, I've really gotten fond of that and learning some new languages as well, just expanding my uh, horizons. My name is Rana, and my question is, how does the work aboard station, including those long-term experiments, change with crew rotation? Well, each crew that comes up here gets basically the same kind of training. And we often don't train to operate a specific experiment. We do more general skills training. And so we can operate whatever experiments happen to show up while we're up here. So often an experiment is tied to a cargo mission. So we get uncrewed cargo vehicles that come up with a whole bunch of supplies to conduct new experiments. And then we send those samples home at the end of typically a month or six weeks when that cargo vehicle goes home. And so when we change over to a different crew, they will just pick up with whatever experiments are still running and still need tending, and then they'll start the new experiments when uh, the new cargo vehicles arrive. Hi, my name is Alice Vomelinka, and my question is, can you see the weather or seasons change on Earth from the International Space Station? Yeah, there's, some, there's a few things we can see. We can certainly see storms like we talked about earlier. We can see if, if it snows, um, then and you fly over someplace and it snowed the day before, you can definitely see the snow. Um, seasons changing. We can't really see the details of leaves changing on, on trees like you can on Earth. Uh, but overall, long term, like if a hurricane or something went through somewhere, then we can see the after effects for sure or a tornado, uh, the devastation that those things um, cause. And, uh, you know, long term, I guess if we we're up here for, for a really long time, we could probably see changes um, like you're talking about in the climate. Hello, my name is Rhea. And my question is, what, what does it feel like with no gravity in space? Well, we do actually have gravity in space that keeps us in orbit around the Earth. But as you can see, Shane here is showing you that it's super fun. We get to do um, flips. We're basically in free fall. So we're falling basically around the Earth. And so what that means is it feels for us like we're floating or like we're flying. And so we can really do all kinds of fun things, like do a flip like Shane just did. Um, and we can zoom around from space to space, and it feels really neat. It does take your body a little while to get used to that, um, to feel comfortable in this environment. But after you get used to it, it's a lot of fun. Hi, my name is Ella and my question is, what do you guys do all, all day up in space? Yeah, that's a great question. We actually work all day, so we have about a 12-hour workday that is scheduled by the Mission Control Centers around the world. We start about 7.30 in the morning and we end about 7.30 every night. 
Um, about two hours of our day is spent working out or exercising. So that, to me, that's a fun part of our day, along with all the science and other things that we're going to do, maintenance um, as well sometimes. So, uh, and then our meals are also in that 12-hour period. So we do a lot of work. We're very busy every day. On the weekends, we get a little less, uh, a little less work to do and a little more time off to relax a bit. Hi, my name is Danica. My question is, does the space station have gravity? If so, why? Well, the Earth's gravity is strong enough to keep us in orbit around the Earth. We're about 250 miles up, and we're going around and around the Earth, kind of in a constant free fall. So one of the really special things about having a laboratory here in low Earth orbit is that we can, um, because we don't have that same normal force acting on us like you do when you're standing on the Earth, we can do lots of really unique science because materials uh, behave differently in this environment and we can learn some things about the fundamentals of how physics work or how flames work, how fluids behave and how our bodies behave and all of these things can help us to create new products for use on earth and also to help us as we travel farther away from our own home planet and go places like the moon and to Mars. Hi my name is Carson and my question is what's your favorite thing about being up in space? Well, a couple of things we've already touched on. Flying around is cool, but I think the the my favorite thing is looking out the window at planet Earth. Um, and I think most astronauts will probably tell you that. Hi, my name is Brad Nelson, and my question is: How are the gravitational forces of non-visible objects being researched on the International Space Station? Well, Braden, it's good to have you back with another astronomy question for me. I appreciate that. Um, I think you're probably asking uh, maybe about dark matter and about dark energy, um, which scientists really still don't understand a whole lot about either of those things. Um, but we can see their influence. Uh, we do think that 80% of the matter in the universe is, is dark matter and, and dark, uh, dark energy. And so um, scientists are working to understand these things better. We do have a particle physics detector here on board the International Space Station, again, outside the space station. Um, that can detect and make very accurate measurements of cosmic rays that can help scientists as they study these phenomena. Um, we as the crew don't really interact with the alpha magnetic spectrometer except when it was installed a number of years ago and then more recently when it needed some repairs, uh, some crew members did some spacewalks to, uh, to fix it up uh, so that it could keep going because it's a very valuable instrument for that kind of ongoing research. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.